Welcome to another Supernatural Scotland, the podcast. As always, I am your host, Mark Smith, here to share the weird and scary stories of Scotland with you. Spread the word and tell your friends about the podcast and share the scary stories of Scotland. You might just hear about a great new place to visit on your travels. Many people around the world love Scotland, but they don't know the half of it. Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats and buckle in for another episode of Supernatural Scotland. Let's start off with one of the most haunted pubs in Britain. It is over 300 years old, so has a long history, and who knows what ghastly acts have been committed in its time. This is a Drover's Inn, located on Old Drover's Road on the A82 at Inverairnan. It has a few ghost stories, but I have focused on the most interesting and creepy stories. Towards the end of the 1700s, one family were removed from their home as a well-known act at the time by greedy landlords for sheep farming. It was known as the Year of the Sheep. They travelled south for a new life in hopes of finding a new home. But a terrible blizzard made them lose their way. They had tried to find the Drover's Inn. However, days later, the family were found frozen to death. It is claimed the family has been seen wandering during the winter months near the Drover's Inn. One couple who stayed in room 2 claimed to be awoken during the night when the room became freezing cold only to be shocked by a young family standing at the foot of the bed shaking from the freezing temperatures. A young boy waved at the couple and appeared cheerful. Perhaps he was happy to have finally made his way to the Drover's Inn after all those terrible years in the freezing cold. There was once a girl that lived close to the inn. She played as normal at the River Fallock behind the inn. She sadly picked the wrong day to play in the river due to heavy rainfall. The river was higher and stronger than normal. The girl dropped her doll into the river and while trying to rescue her favourite doll, she was caught in the undercurrents. She was found later downstream, having died in the freezing waters. She was pulled from the river and they laid her poor and frozen body down in room 6. Her body stayed in room 6 until her burial in the local graveyard. Guests staying in room 6 have awoken during the night, feeling the presence of a frozen and wet body lying next to them in bed. Can you imagine waking up in a place you don't know very well, feeling an icy cold and wet body beside you? It is also said the doll has appeared and disappeared at times. I would like to think the girl in death found her favourite doll. A woman stayed at the Drover's Inn one night for a birthday celebration. Afterwards, the lady contacted the inn to ask who the little girl in the pink dress was in the photograph. The girl was not with the group and they could not remember seeing a girl in pink. The person taking the photo also claimed the girl was definitely not in the photo when she took it. It is claimed no children were staying in the hotel that night and so that mystery remains unresolved. Another ghost claimed to be seen from time to time is Angus, the cattle drover. Angus, after travelling many miles from the highlands, decided to stop for the night to rest his cattle at the drover's inn. 
Angus had drank himself silly that night and he woke later than planned. To his horror, the cattle had been stolen during the night. Angus had no choice but to return to the chieftain he was supposed to deliver the cattle to. The man was a ruthless and brutal chieftain who upon hearing the news killed Angus's family and his girlfriend. Angus was then banished from the clan. Angus, full of despair and rage, tracked the thieves back to the drover's inn. He hid waiting for the perfect moment to take his revenge. Angus was unaware. He was spotted earlier and they knew he was seeking revenge. They then took Angus by surprise and Angus's tragic story came to an end when they murdered him by hanging him from a tree behind the inn and bleeding him like an animal. <coughs> Angus has been seen many times during the night screaming in pain and wandering the area. Poor Angus, what a terrible way to go after losing his family and his girlfriend. Our next story is about the Socky Poltergeist. This poltergeist terrorised a family in the village of Socky in Clackmannanshire. Now let me start off by explaining what a poltergeist is for those that don't know. A poltergeist is not just a normal ghost. Poltergeist translates from German as knocking spirit. Poltergeists are well known for making noises around the house. It doesn't always stop there and they are also well known for physical hauntings and throwing objects. They can cause actual physical violence to their victim and have been known from time to time to actually follow a person from one building to another, unlike normal ghosts which normally haunt one place and not usually one specific person. Our case occurred in 1960 and the victim was a young girl called Virginia Campbell, who was 11 years old at the time. She had moved to Scotland with her mother to work in a nearby place called Dollar. Her father stayed in Ireland to work on the family farm. Virginia was obviously stressed by the moving away from home and from the rest of her family. It's safe to say Virginia was a lonely girl and troubled by the big upheaval. Her and her mother moved in with her auntie and uncle and her younger cousin. As it was a small home, she had to share a room and bed with her younger cousin. Her mother found work elsewhere and moved closer to her work, leaving poor Virginia to live in Socky and unintentionally put more pressure on the little girl. It's recorded that Virginia was a very shy girl anyway and was made to move to another country and then to be abandoned by her mother with family she likely did not know very well. The first sign of the poltergeist occurred on the 22nd of November 1960. Virginia and her younger cousin Margaret lay in bed and began to hear strange noises. It is said they could hear something like a ball bouncing. When they shouted her uncle, he told them to go to sleep. It was just their imagination. He would soon realise how wrong he was. When the sounds continued, they ran downstairs, followed by the noise, which seemed to follow them all the way downstairs. The noise then stopped and everyone was confused and likely freaked out. The adults thought the kids could be playing a prank, but this was not the case. When the girls returned to bed, and only after a few moments, a knocking started, and it appeared to be coming from the headboard. They even moved the kids to another bed to see if it stopped. It did not. (laughs) 
Eventually, she fell asleep and the knocking came to an end. The knocking returned the next night and the adults, not knowing what else to do, called a local minister. He arrived after midnight. He also heard the loud knocking. They moved Virginia away from the headboard, thinking it was a prank. But to their horror, the knocking continued. Then a large, heavy linen chest near the bed began to rock and floated just a little off the ground. It then moved towards the bed. It then stopped and returned to where it belonged. The kids were terrified and the minister did not know what to do. Other strange happenings occurred. There was scratching sounds coming from different parts of the property to things moving on their own and the knocking continued. On November the 25th, the girl returned to school after having days off due to the incessant knocking. During the lesson, she noticed another desk slid opening on its own. The teacher later reported the lid of Virginia's desk had opened also and closed three times, and then the girl had struggled to keep it shut. An unoccupied desk had then began to float till it was around an inch off the floor, just for a moment. The strange happenings continued, and items continuing to move on their own. The knocking continued, and so did the bouncing ball sounds. The haunting continued to increase in strength and eventually the story hit the papers. Some believed the girl had psychic abilities and every time she was feeling emotional, strange things would happen. Three ministers visited to perform a religious service in Virginia's room. During this time, the knocking and scratching was heard. The poltergeist appeared to lose strength after the service, although it still tried to haunt the girl. The girl, having gained confidence, eventually gave the poltergeist the nickname Wee Huey. Some more activity continued, but not on the same scale as it had previously. By March 1961, the poltergeist had disappeared and no other activity was ever recorded. And now for our creature feature. A bodak is a terrifying creature from Scotch folklore. It is small and looks like a creepy old man. The bodak could be classed the same as a bogeyman. The bodak exists to frighten children into being good. If I was told the story of a bodak as a child, I would have been very well behaved and may not have slept for quite some time. It is said the bodak captures children, but not well behaved children. It had a taste for naughty children. When a child was naughty enough, the bodak would climb down the chimney and sneak through the house to find a naughty child who would never be seen again. Now you may ask what happened to these children. It is said the Bodak would eat them up. It is also said that if you catch sight of the Bodak it's a bad omen and that someone will die very soon. This actually reminds me of a nightmare I had in the family home as a child and it has always stuck with me. We had a chimney and a fireplace which was in fact near my bedroom. I was sleeping and I was awoke by a strange growling and scratching but I couldn't move. 
I looked towards the door to see long, dirty, bony fingers wrapping themselves around the side of the door. The nails were long and filthy. The creature was covered in old, filthy rags and I could not see its face under its cloak. To my horror, it slowly came towards me. It was one of these nightmares where you couldn't move, I was frozen. But I had my trusty watch which glowed green when you touched a button. And as the creature came for me, I tried with all my strength to reach down and press my watch. As the creature, who was short, looked down on me, I managed to press a button and the watch glowed brightly, making the room look green. The creature jumped back and I looked towards the door. The last thing I seen was its bony fingers sliding behind the door. And that was the end of the creature. Our second creature is a glaistig. It is a malicious and benign creature which is believed to be a form of shapeshifter or ghost. It is known to appear as a beautiful woman or a monstrous half-woman, half-goat. She normally hides her ghost legs under a long green robe or dress. It's said she can lure men to her lair by singing or dancing and she has been known to ask travellers to carry her across a stream. She has been known to make men lose their way and get lost in the wilds of Scotland. Or she may just cut your throat and let you bleed out. She likes to drink men's blood. This creature is said to go out her way to protect cattle and herders. Shame she was not around for poor Angus. If you hear her wailing like a banshee, it's because a creature under her protection is about to die. And that is the end of this episode. Thank you for listening. You must remember to behave yourself to avoid the bodak and to be wary of beautiful women in green. You never know how thirsty they are. Goodbye. <laughs>